Bramble the Mountain King is an experienced game within a dark rendition of Nordic Fables. One part walking sideways simulator, one part mini game set piece in darkness. It traverses between the two as it tells a story of Ole and his sister and their fateful adventure in the night. Two siblings who step out into the darkness and write into a huge story of troubles, terrors, tribulations, and some trolls. Speaking of tribulations, without sponsors, all these videos would go away. Well, or YouTube just wouldn't show them to anybody. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notify all bell, and comment on this sucker. Check out the ACG vids Reddit, discuss these, or go to the podcast and review that. You don't need to do anything with your wallet to support the channel. Now, it's time to support a game. You've got climbing and jumping and sneaking, occasionally fighting, and often using items and creatures in the locations to further your adventures in Bramble the Mountain King. A game like Flashback, but as a fiery fairy tale. And let me tell you, some of the content is as dark as the night that they go out into. The warning about content matter at the starting of the game is a bit like having a here there may be monster sign on the Black Dolphin prison in Russia. It's accurate. A darkly whimsical adventure tale where you travel out with your sister and then look for your sister and experience this land, moving through the world's immense set pieces like fairy tales themselves, occasionally needing the help of the forest inhabitants, and other times running directly from them. Gameplay isn't overly sophisticated. It's a mix of platforming and puzzling where you might find yourself pulling a rickety boat across a creek that you wish would just be a little less wide, or mixing potions to get you through a doorway, or piecing together the haunting characters and stories that you've met to try to bring you to a cohesive decision on the next location. Only as you dive deeper into the game do you actually find friends, or at the least acquaintances, within the game world. Sad and downtrodden, showing that life within a fairy tale world is more dire than any pages or paragraphs could possibly explain. Think of it a bit like Take Two or Tale of Two Sons. Where the Mountain King relishes and highlights is in this excellent series of gameplay design decisions that consistently plays out. It has you constantly guessing what you may need or may not need to do in any one section, from singing stone friends to corralling a bunch of buck naked fairy folk into sheep corrals. It's all here. There's always something new every single step of the way. It's always building on something that you've learned a little bit before, but it seems to always keep the mystery alive for every new location, something just a little bit askew or a guess in what you might need to do. Presentation-wise, the game is a bit like Abzu or Journey, from Everyone's Gone to the Rapture or Edith Finch, all sort of mixed together, always hinging something on its viewpoint or location that you walk into. From momentary first-person suspenseful moments to 2D travels across mysterious lands, it's all here. Bramble King is a mixture of all of these moments, always showing up with some new type of stylized control, from first-person sleepy walks to 2D travels across muddy bogs or through pollen-filled glens. And sometimes those areas that you actually go to need to be slightly adjusted to get you to the next location. It's those change-ups, the beautiful delivery that consistently gives Bramble an otherworldly feeling, even when it's not showcasing some incredible vista or some changing of the scene itself of scale like Alice in Wonderland, but with two Alices, there's always something just on the horizon. And that presentation can be incredible. Every location within this game is a delight, even those you simply cross through very quickly. The dandelions towering over your character one moment, then the next giving piggyback rides to gnomes through water lilies, or using a juicy worm to get an entire hand-sized mount to escort you across impossible spaces. The animations tell the tale. When you cross a bridge with a gnome on you, for a moment they look around, and then they also put these little hands out in an effort to help you balance. Moonlight groves with beams from distant moons filter just enough light to make sure that you can move the main character through those locations, with grass flitting and moving around his little feet as a storyteller narrates the next part of the tale. Also, graphically, there's a heavy use of depth of field and unique cuts as well as a generous amount of lethargy on the main character's moments and movements, and I need to make this clear. Even more so, where a lot of games shift to the shrunken mixing of a world like Fraggle Rock or The Secret of Nim, and a character still moves at this odd pace for their size, this game has a slightly different movement set than that. It feels a little off-kilter, and it can certainly at first feel too weighty as if the character's just not moving quick enough. But what you end up finding out and what you end up discovering to great delight is that it's done on purpose to make it feel cinematic. However, that sense of scale does cause some issues. Textures displayed far away look fine, but when you get down to the spaghetti sauce innards of whatever creature met its end at the dinner table of who captured you, the textures can look blocky, dated, and low detail. Also, movement can be improved. While normally walking through the world, the control is good, 
it's noticeably weighty, like I said before, and the game doesn't worry about keeping you directed down the center of any one particular part of the path. This helps in the presentation of it being a movie or a dream with movements and moments where the world is out of focus. But as a player, that can often lead you to feeling that the game is just a little bit off, a little bit askew. Now, that works for the storytelling element, but not necessarily for all moments of control of the main character. Graphically, I think this game looks phenomenal. It looks like a storybook come to life, and even at parts where there's rough textures or there's something that isn't working necessarily perfectly, there's some moment in almost every one of these locations that causes you to sit back and be like, that looks awesome. When it comes to the sound and the audio, this all makes sense and it has to work perfectly, especially for a game world where scale is a big deal. The game hinges on using sound as an environmental element and a special one here, but due to how it plays out, it isn't actually required to be uniformly accurate. A lot of this is delivering an almost a movie style format. It doesn't have to be a third person action game with perfect 3D channeling. This helps because that means some of these scenes, like moments of reflection into a dark dream or exploration or running from a giant looking to flee being at food into their mouths, you can have a much wider audio presentation than would normally be there. It's available to the characters to give you this feeling of wideness in some of these locations, but it isn't necessarily accurate. It is cinematic and obviously thematic in its style, but it doesn't rely on specifics that a lot of people who play these games might expect, especially in some of these locations which might feel wider than they should or they feel a little bit more cramped down than they should. But when you look at the scale of the characters and the story they want to tell, I think it fits. What else fits? The music. It is excellent, somber, but the one or two vocal tracks here are incredible haunting, spiritual callings that remind you of some of the best moments in games like Red Dead 1's Ride Back into the Last Memory of John Marston, while this one has you walking into the background as this flitting, haunting vocal pipes sadly across the entire location. It is excellent. While the rest of the music is equal to that moment, at least instrumentally, it's tied to a boss or tied to a location. The less said about some of this music, the better, because I want you to be surprised by it. Really, it's incredible. It's got an eye towards melancholy versus masterpiece, and the strings and the different sections that you get don't hit necessarily like big budget blockbusters, but as more personal pieces set to very particular characters or enemies you see in the game. Lastly, let's talk about voice. While the main characters are mostly a series of sounds of oohs and ahs, they're done tremendously well. Like babies, for example, for the young gnomes. They sound like kids. Sounds of the gnomes with haunting cries or sounds of fright works perfectly well to deliver this off-camber feeling to all of the voices there. But even better is the narrative of the single female voice actress who does the dark telling of the future adventures of the brother and sister. Narrating the books, you find this game world spreading out around you and the narrator themselves does a perfect job fitting it together. Very well done, even if you could certainly say it's minimalistic. When all that comes together and the audio and the gameplay and the presentation and the story, does it hit the fun factor and does it really create a game that's enjoyable to play? When these games are done right, their fun is usually different in a different way, like let's say Flower or Journey. It's obvious that Bramble is aiming for the same thing and one not so polished as those in the end, to me it's almost as noteworthy. It's more direct and obviously more easy to understand than some of those titles, especially with the overarching narrator. It hints is a bit less on the mystery there with a bit more of the mystery in the actual locations. Bramble's story is a tiny bit easier to follow because of that. It doesn't negate its impact though. It Takes Two or Plague Tale, Bramble King does resemble those titles from time to time and not just in the two-person protagonist point of view, though here it's much less so. It's also clumsier than those, though, and it doesn't rise to the feeling of smoothness that either of those games do. There are times when the feeling of movement bounced off invisible boundaries or collisions just did not feel right, and that definitely did become noticeable as I continued through the game. However, it beats that sense of scale into you, and dare I say that it is better probably when it comes to the sense of scale than a lot of other games that maybe mess around with this. The game consistently plays off that scale until you wonder... How many really worlds within worlds are there? Because you go into a place where you obviously can realize you're not at normal scale, and then you see scales beneath and beneath. And maybe it's turtles all the way down. Who knows? And sometimes you find yourself questioning, is this a giant to everyone or just a giant to me? And is there a giant to them? 
absolutely wicked way of delivering this. While it may not have the smoothness or the action-adventure gameplay chops of Take-Two, I think that Bramble King just has this weighty, creepy feel to it. The mini tasks, the games that get progressively wrapped up directly within the fairy tale itself and the narrator work. As you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale or deep, deep sale or never touch rating system. This would be a purchase at this price. It is a budget price. I think it is well worth playing. If you're into these type of games, you have to be aware. This is not in any way, shape or form like a lot of other games where there's going to be a ton of fighting. These are one of those experienced games and it is a good one within a lot of the examples that I have given you. It does its own thing and it attempts to go out there and deliver at the very least something unique, which I think from start to finish it did. So as you guys know, unique is something I like to do or try to do. If you get a chance, go to the Reddit, join there, ACG vids, or follow me here, hit the subscribe all button or check out the podcast. We cover games every single week. We also do hardware reviews. We have multiple people come on as guests. It's an awesome podcast. And I want to say thanks to everybody who actually also gave it a rating for whatever reason. In particular, iTunes absolutely cares about that kind of stuff. So it really does help when you do that. Peace out. If you get this game, I hope you enjoy it. I'd like to hear what you thought on Twitter if you do play it. Other than that, stay tuned for a ton more reviews from me, well, as well as other content. Peace out. Lamus would always look after his only friend. Olle felt a chill as he saw the warnings for desperate mothers carrying their infants. They pleaded with them not to carry out the unspeakable acts they had set their minds to. Oh.